everyone! Today I wanted to share with you some of the techniques that I use that really help me to stay grounded and focused, uh, particularly when the world around me is swimming. Um, I've got some clients going through annual budget cycles at the moment, which is a whole heap of fun, as I'm sure many of you know, um, and it can be quite a stressful time. So uh, it triggered me this week to, to really put some time into, well, what are the techniques, what are the actual solid tools that I use to help myself stay grounded? when the world around me is getting chaotic um, and a little out of hand. So um, meditation and mindfulness practice has a whole bunch of benefits in terms of um, what it can do for your mental and physical well-being. Now, I'm not going to quote scientific papers at you or percentages and statistics. I'll let you do that on your own. Um, there are a lot of scientific studies to back up the benefits of mindfulness practice and meditation practice. Um, however, the, what you really need to know is that the reduction in stress um, and the improvement in happiness and well-being that results uh, from a regular meditation practice is both statistically significant and long-lasting in as little as 10 to 15 minutes a day. So the science is out there. Um, I won't go into that detail. What I thought I'd share with you is four different techniques that I use on a regular basis that help me in um, in my day-to-day -day life, but also in certain situations just to kind of anchor back and, and feel really grounded um, and ready to take on the world. So the first type of meditation practice that you will often come into contact with is what I would call a body scan. Um, it's a type of guided meditation where you're often sitting or lying down, eyes closed, and the lead or the guide will take you through scanning various parts of your body. You might start at your head and work down and just feel into various parts of your body, um, looking for tension areas, looking to feel for sensations. It's really a practice that's based around inward reflection. Um, and those of you who are word nerds out there, might want to go up and go and look up uh, interoception, which is the sense over and above the five that we normally talk about. And it's all about feeling inward and feeling into our bodies. So that body scan can be a really great practice. Um, I often use it towards the end of the day to help me come down in the evening if I've had a stressful day, um, or even in the morning first thing as you're waking up to really slowly bring the body up. Um, slowly kind of wake up and, and get into your daily rhythm. It can be a really grounding thing to do first thing in the morning and it can be very relaxing to do last thing at night. So body scans are a great, um, a, a great method. Um, I often like to practice them when I've got a little bit of time and space around me and I, and I can actually go into it as opposed to um, necessarily being something that I can apply in the moment to kind of help me through. However, um, linked to body scans are a lot of the breathing meditations that you'll find. So um, both the Smiling Mind and Headspace apps are really good for these body scanning and breathing meditations. Um, the breath work, you'll often hear people start to talk about sitting down, feeling your feet on the floor, um, starting to listen to your breath, starting to feel your breath in your body, noticing whereabouts you're breathing from. Are you breathing in your chest? Are you breathing in your stomach? Uh, are the ribs moving sideways as well as up and down? What's going on? So breathing exercises are often tied to into that sort of body scan state. Uh, and as I said, the Smiling Mind and Headspace apps are really, really great examples if you want to take a short meditation from sort of five minutes, they'll actually go all the way up to 30 minutes worth of, of that sort of meditation. Um, I actually like breathing exercises when I'm in the moment. Uh, sometimes it's all I need is to just remember that I'm starting to breathe and you, and you can feel your body. If you, if you breathe in your chest, you can feel your body and your shoulders start to tense. So if you've been doing this all day, um, I actually find a, a quick breathing meditation and just a little bit of a moment to focus on my breath. Breathe right into the belly. Think about expanding the back of the ribs out and downwards um, and really filling up the entire chest cavity. That's something that I do in the moment. Works really, really well if you're at a busy train stop waiting for the uh, train to arrive and you've got a bit of anxiety coming on or 
you're in the middle of a really stressful meeting and you just know that you need to take a pause before you open your mouth and respond, <laughs> breathing meditations actually fit really nicely into that. They can be quite a, um, quite a quick way to calm down. Um, and and to pull you back into your body even just a single breath um, best if you can do five breaths and focus on the out breath being longer than the in breath because what that's going to do is it helps you to link into a different part of your nervous system that's all about relaxation rather than your fight and flight so breathing is a technique that you can actually use to influence how your body's responding to a situation and that can help to, um, to release the stress or release the immediate tension. So body scans and breathing exercises are probably the most common type of meditation practice that you'll come into contact with if you're starting out. Um, and as I said, there's a couple of good apps out there. Uh, for the yogis in the room, uh, you've got a third type of meditation, which I tend to call like a yogic or an energetic meditation. Um, these sorts of things are often story related. Uh, if you're in a yoga class, this is Shavasana when your teacher is talking about feeling into your heart center and expanding that warm bubble of energy through your body. So uh, connected to the body scan type stuff, but probably more so around, um, as I said, following a story uh, or, or following almost that dreamlike state of having somebody, putting yourself almost into that slightly hypnotic, just allowing someone to talk you through a story. Uh, some people really enjoy energetic meditations, again, as a way of feeling into our bodies. Um, but it can also be quite a subtle thing in terms of not necessarily focusing so much on the physical sensation, uh, but more on the inward sensation. And that can often start to bring up a lot of emotional and energetic type stuff for you to work through. Um, that's not to say that the other types of meditation don't. It's just that that's often when I find that if I've been really wrestling with something for a day, um, that can be the moment where I have either like a bit of a vision about something or something clicks into place or um, even in some cases something terrifying kind of crops up and you have a bit of a, a start. And uh, I, I liken it to bubbles in, um, in a stew that's boiling. Um, and those bubbles sort of filtering to the surface. So energetic meditation is a bit more of a, um, I guess, a way of subconsciously and passively reflecting, um, more so than active body reflection, active breathing reflection. The fourth type of uh, meditation practice that I use regularly is what I call inner questioning. So the, for these uh, type of meditations, I like to give myself a half hour space uh, I've done this both again at the end of the day or in the early morning, um, but I like to give myself enough space to know that I'm not rushed. And one of the meditations that I use regularly, it actually helped me a lot in terms of understanding my own sense of purpose in the world, is three simple questions. And so all you do is sit down, take a moment, kind of close your eyes, focus on the breath for a bit, and then ask yourself a question and wait to see what comes up. So it's a very passive type of reflection, um, and yet you're able to guide where you're focusing to some degree. Uh, so the meditation that I've used that I love and I teach others often is three simple questions. It's who am I, what do I want, and what is my purpose? And I'll simply sit and ask those questions one at a time and give space for an answer to arise. And things will come up. Sometimes it can be quite unrelated, so seemingly unrelated. And then after a period of time, um, the mind sort of starts to quiet down again, and I'll ask a second question. Um, these type of re reflections, these type of meditations work best in repetition and in sequence over a long period of time. So um, I like to actually repeat them. Maybe it's not once a day, but it might be once a week for a period of six months. And that's where you can start to really get into some of that inner discovery um, but as I said, in, in more of a passive subconscious way, it's not sitting down and, you know, making a life plan on a piece of paper and engaging that side of the brain. It's actually about what else is going on, what am I processing in the background, um, what's kind of in and around my consciousness that I might not be aware of or paying attention to, and allowing some of that stuff to come up and flush through. Um, so I, I find those, uh, as I said, best practice when you're able to give yourself time and space. And I, I allow at least sort of a half an hour um, to actually sit in meditation for, for that type of 
um, practice. And just so that you're not rushed, allow those questions to come up, um, take the insights. Uh, and that leads quite nicely into the last practice that I use, which is journaling. So I will often have a notebook and a pencil next to me when I'm meditating or um, you know, I might jot some notes at the end of the practice, but a, an active journaling practice is another really nice way to get into this meditative state. So I've done everything from a gratitude journal where you write down the three things that you're grateful for at the end of the day. It's a really nice way to finish the day um, through to like a monthly reflection and just giving yourself space once a month to write and, and to just keep writing for about 10 minutes. Um, you can kind of time box it and force yourself to write for 10 minutes. You could pick a topic and just go for as long as you want. But that process of journaling stuff out is um, super, super useful. And it doesn't have to be written. So if you're not someone who is so, um, I guess, verbally, or if you're not a word nerd, <laughs> then the other way that I journal is I'll often draw. Uh, I have a, a huge history of... Um, being fascinated with the human skeleton. Um, it's going back a long, long way. And so often if I'm journaling and, and it's not really feeling like a wordy day, I'll just start to doodle and draw. And that process of drawing, it's often vertebrae or you know something that's going on. Um, but that can help to just allow the thoughts to roll a little, um, allow you again to passively reflect on what's going on without necessarily being too actively engaged. And I think that's probably the key in all of this. Meditation is and mindfulness practice is about taking yourself out of that flight and fight mode, which is very, very easy to slip into. Um, you know, we have an initial stress trigger, we get an adrenal release and we get hyped up. But if we're still hyped up after an hour or so, the body will start to release other hormones. Um, and those stress hormones aren't dissipated from the bodily body as readily as adrenaline is. It's not absorbed. You have to actively remove it. Um, and so... As you start to get that build up over an extended period of time, if you've had a stressful week even, that whole sensation of kind of holding on to things, um, what meditation and mindfulness helps us to do is to flip ourselves out of that side of our nervous system and into what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. So we're wanting to get into a sense of relaxation, uh, a space where we can allow the body to actually take a breath <laughs> and to get into more of a healing uh, type of place. So those are all of the uh, techniques that I use really regularly. So some of them I use daily, some of them I'll use once a week, some of them I'll use once a month. Um, but I hope that was useful. Sometimes when you're starting out on your mindfulness journey, you can sort of be pointed in one direction and think that's the only um, place that you can go. Um, and I guess what I wanted to share is that there's a whole plethora of different ways to take that time and to get into that mindful space uh, and there's a lot of good tools out there too so smiling mind and headspace as apps that have free guided meditations that they can walk you through um, and check out a whole bunch of podcasts too so there's some really good ones out there i really enjoy awaken the world uh, as well as i should be meditating um, for more of that sort of story type focus uh, and then have a go at the questions so asking yourself a question pausing reflecting and and repeating that on a regular basis uh, so that's it from me this week wherever you are in the world I hope you're having a wonderful wonderful day leave me a comment below let me know how you go with those practices I would love to hear from you